It's that time of the week when we bring to your living rooms security and crime stories that made headlines during the week. Welcome to another edition of Crime Watch on Television Continental. I'm Ivy Kano. More than 650 rifles seized in Lagos. Unidentified men invade courts and took away notorious kidnapper in Imo State. And in Ogun State, police arrest two more kidnappers involved in the kidnap of students in Turkish school. We'll start off in Lagos where the Nigerian Customs Service has seized more than 650 pump action rifles concealed in a 40 feet container in Lagos. The arms hidden among steel doors and other merchandise goods were confiscated at the Apapa Mile 2 Expressway. Correspondent Ifunanya Eze has more in this report. This one now carried 10 cartridges. It's one of the new, newest uh, make in uh, the design in, 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 in operation now. So this one, if somebody has this, you can be sure how many lives will it take. The Controller General of Customs, Hamid Ali, describing the massive destruction that can be caused if one of these rifles gets into the wrong hand. Explaining how the illegal consignment was intercepted, Ali lamented the audacity of the importers of the 661 pump action rifles. Concerns were raised over the fact that customs officers cleared the consignment out of the port before it was intercepted by officers from the Federal Operations Unit along Mile 2. On Sunday, 22nd January 2017, the roving team of the Nigerian Customs Service Federal Operations Unit while in inform on, in, on information patrol intercepted a marked truck with registration number BDG265XG. That's this truck here. Conveying a one by 40 feet container with number PONU slice 8259143. Along mile two, Apaporo. The truck was immediately taken to the premises of FOU Zone A, Ikeja, here, where a physical examination revealed 49 boxes containing a total number of 661 pieces of pump action rifles concealed with steel doors and other merchandise. Let me explain here. In the declaration of the items in the container, the importer concealed these weapons and declared them as steel doors. So as far as the papers that brought in this container is concerned, they were, they, they were said, first declaration was made that all the consignment within in this container contains steel doors. But as you can see, these are not steel doors. These rifles are under absolute prohibition. Such deadly contravention of the law is even more unacceptable and considering the fragile security situation in some parts of the country. Well, is it some parts all, all over? Because we have kidnappers, we have armed robbers, and uh, in those, those areas that we have insurgency is more intense. But there's virtually any, no part of this country that we do not have. We have cattle rustlers, who are also using the same weapons. Armed robbers are using the same weapons. And kidnappers, most especially, are also using the same weapons. So they are deadly in whatever nook and corners, crannies of this country. Already the suspects have been arrested. Already we have arrested three suspects in connection with this illegal importation. Since they are suspect, we would not, the law does not allow us to parade them until they are pronounced guilty. And therefore, but we will give you the names of those individuals of your own information. One is Mr. Oscar Okafo, who is the importer, his age 51. Then Mr. Mahmoud Hassan, Hassan, declaring agent. Is age 56, and Mr. Sadiq Mustafa accompanying the consignment 
to its destination. Investigation has revealed com uh, uh, has or investigation already commenced, and I have directed that the drag net should be wide open to fish out all persons involved in the importation and clearing of this consignment. Already, the officers involved in the clearance of this container are with the controller FOU under detention. So it's not only the importer, nor the clearing agent, also all our officers that are involved in the process of clearing this thing are also going to be properly investigated, investigated and prosecuted for the offense that has been committed. Considering the number of containers that are imported into the country daily, questions were asked about the scanners that are not working at the ports especially when human error cannot be eliminated in the course of customs 100% examination. Yes, we have problems with scanners. Most of them are not working. We are working diligently to replace them. Because of the unavailability of scanners, we have now compelled our officers to ensure it will be long, it will be, it's not going to facilitate trade as we want it. But for security of this country, we will rather go through the pains of taking every container at a time. Because if we had done everything diligently, probably this would not have left the port. The customs boss says that three suspects arrested in connection with the prohibited importation will be investigated for more information. Wow, that's massive. Imagine if that had gotten to whoever ordered for them. Now to Imo State, a rare incident happened in Oweri High Court on Friday. More than six gunmen stormed the courtroom and whisked away a suspect believed to be their member. Henry Chibweze Allies Vampire has been on trial since July 2015. An eyewitness says the assailant shot for 10 minutes as soon as prison vans brought the suspect and other 50 inmates into the court. Inmates, security operatives, and people scampered for safety when the shooting began. Speaking to journalists in the court premises, the public relations officer of the Nigerian Prison Service, Imo State Command, Madoka James, confirmed and expressed worry over the whole saga. We were in the office this morning when uh, we got an alert that we had there was a little problem here in the court. First, some of our men that uh, took the inmates to court this morning. About uh, 50 something inmates came to court this morning. So they came and uh, we were told that some people armed were already in the court. But our people thought that they were SSS people, you know. So after distributing these people to go to their various courts, they started, they opened fire on our men and even some inmates. So as of now, the picture looks sketchy. But I know that uh, about five people we are wounded, which we are short of for now, and uh, the controller has directed that he be taken to hospital. We, I think uh, he is the main person why they had to strike by this particular hour of the day. Who? Tell us the name of uh, They call him Vampire. I don't know his real name, but, but um, for now he's at large. Meanwhile, the Imo State government has offered a 5 million naira reward to anyone with information on the whereabouts of the notorious criminal. After a meeting with heads of security agencies in attendance, Governor Rocha Sokorocha faulted the Nigerian prison service for the incident. He charged security operatives to ensure the notorious criminal is found. Now let's take you back to when the kidnapper Henry Chibweze and some members of his gang were arrested. It was a gathering aimed at informing the media on the efforts of government and security operatives in curbing criminal activities in the state. Governor Rocha Zokorocha, who set the ball rolling, expressed happiness that the man who had been terrorizing the people of the Southeast is now in the net of the state security service. The man terrorizing Nigeria, as far as been caught, the kidnapper terrorizing Nigeria has been caught by a name vampire. Vampire have killed well over 300 people and um, he has confessed all the people he has killed. Um, um, 
The name was said here. Vampire has confessed killing uh, three brothers in in uh, Wangale. Um, some of them has killed. Uh, he was one who killed um, the a member of the uh, House Assembly Service Commission. Um, Toknadu. He confessed he killed Toknadu. And what's the reason? He said the man was 80. He was behaving like a commissioner, so he shot him. What vampire does is that whenever he gets any of his, kidnaps somebody, if you bring any less money, he will kill the person. He confessed that four people died in his custody. As if that was not enough, the governor moved the venue of the meeting to the office of the SSS, where the alleged terrorist Henry Chibweze, alias Vampire, and the members of his gang are kept. The change of the meeting venue by Governor Okorocha gave Vampire the opportunity to express himself. The money I used to get, I used to use them to help people. I know they eat the money. I know they eat them to know nothing from them. That was Governor Rochas Okorocha showing appreciation to the security chiefs for arresting Vampire. This the governor did by donating more than nine Hilux trucks to them. We assure you that we do better and all the criminals in the state we leave this state and come to the past. The arrest of vampire, according to experts, will go a long way in reducing crime in the southeast. Our next stop will be in Plateau State. The police authority in Jaws, the capital, have confirmed the interception of two thugs by the special tax force carrying a total number of 145 children believed to be from Bauchi, Gombe, and Jigawa State, respectively. Suspects arrested with the children claimed they were taking the children where they would get a better Islamic education. TVC News Plateau correspondent Funam Joshua has more in this report. These children appear to be victims of child traffickers arrested by the efforts of the Special Task Force Operation Safe Heaven operating in Plateau North Central Nigeria. The minors were inside these two trucks at the time of the arrest as confirmed by the spokesperson Plateau State Police Command. The operatives of STF Sector 2 that is located opposite the University of Jos intercepted two trucks 
load of miners in transit to some states in the north central Nigeria. So when they intercepted them, immediately they alerted the police and transferred them to the police on the 13th of December, which is January. And the police now swung into action by getting uh, information from the people who were transporting them, the drivers, the conductors, and parents of the kids. The living condition of the children at the time of the arrest cast doubts in the minds of the police authority as to the authenticity of the testimony of the suspect arrested conveying the children. They were transported in trucks like uh, animals. It is not good. Their decency must be protected. And on their way, the children confessed that the conductors, two of them were using a uh, horse whip on them. If we go and see the two trucks where 135 kids were packed in, it's an eyesore. It is not good, it's not decent. Somebody's animal, uh, animals can never even be taken in those uh, trucks. And another thing, the movement, why in the night? These are the questions that are begging for answers. The claims made by the suspected traffickers have been faulted by an Islamic cleric who sees it not in line with modern Islam. This is 21st century and we have to wake up and embrace civilization. This is not a teaching of Islam that people will be roaming about, you know, itinerant, you know, going from one place to another, begging for food, or rather doing all sorts of things at, 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 at a very early stage, you know fending for themselves. It is just like the parents are just running away from responsibility. The unfortunate situation has attracted a lot of interest from the various media organizations and religious bodies. This prompted the Plateau State Government through the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development to swing into action. In collaboration with the police and Jamaatu Nasri Islam Plateau chapter, the state government finally decided to relocate the children back to Bauchi State. We felt it is necessary because the state already is operating a child rights law. So any child that is found, there's mass movement of children within or outside the state. It's normally the search children have to be intercepted and find out where actually they are going because all this is done to avoid the issue of child trafficking. TVC News crew accompanied the convoy from Plateau State Police Command amid tight security which took the children back to Bauchi State where most of them are believed to come from and on arrival in Bauchi State. The Emir's palace was the first port of call and the Emir received the minors. A little celebration was organized at the Emir's palace in honor of the children who were then officially handed over to the Bauchi State government. Any village you go in Bauchi State, you can acquire all what you need in terms of religious education. Why, for goodness sake, should someone just abandon his child to be taken to an unknown destination just to seek education. It is, it is really very unfortunate. The 145 children have been taken to a safe abroad by the state government where physicians will be invited to run medical and psychological checks to determine their state of well-being. The Commissioner of Police, Sogun State Command, Ahmed Diliasu, has presented the rescue students and staff of the Nigerian Turkish College, Isheri, to the Ogun State Governor, Senator Ibikunle Amosun, at the Governor's office. TVC News correspondent Kazim Olowe reports that all the security chiefs were present. It was a moment of joy for parents, students, staff and government of Ogun State when the eight abducted staff and students of Nigeria Turkish International College Isheri were presented by the police to the government of the state. The abductees who were kidnapped on Friday, January the 13th, spent 11 days in captivity before regaining their freedom. Speaking about the success recorded through the rescue, the Commissioner of Police Ahmed Ilyasu said immediately the incident happened, the police swung into action and the identities of kidnappers were uncovered. He said through the support of sister security agencies, including the military, the kidnappers surrendered and the victims were rescued on earth. He assured the government and the parents that the operation is a continuous 
and that the kidnappers will be arrested. The identity of the Bundlers and their cohorts were uncovered. Following the huge pressure mounted on them in conjunction with other security agencies, the Department of Security Services, the military, and the deployment of the technically driven team of intelligence response system of the Inspector uh, General of Police. Yesterday, the uh, condoms or the miscreants behind this incident here, and the victims, eight of them were arrested. While appreciating the government and the security agencies, the managing director of the school and a parent said words cannot express their joy but commended the president and the governor of the state for their swift action. It has been 11 days uh, and uh, days and nights were mixed in each other, uh, sleepless nights, anxiety, but at the end uh, I want to thank uh, all the people of Nigeria, even abroad people, they really prayed for their safety and at the end now we are celebrating togetherness and uh, once again I want to thank you our parents for their solid solidarity that they have shown up to now. Thanks everybody from the Directorate of the National Security, the Inspector General of Police, the AIG, the Commissioner and even the operatives, the field men of the National this Department of State Security. We were all in this together and we are very happy as parents that it has turned out the way it has turned out. On his part, Governor Ibikule Amosun appreciated the efforts of security agencies and gave strong warning to hoodlums and criminals that the state will not be a canvas zone for them. And for us, we have gone around now to see all our schools, either all our bodies schools, even those ones that are not bodies. So we are trying to see again, we are going to rejig our security so that we will make uh, local states will not be a cover zone for all these criminals. And I have a word for them, and I'm happy that we are saying this. I know they will be monitoring all that, and if they have been doing it, indeed I just refrain from directly speaking with them because I was there when they were so I'm talking to them, we're just tracking them. But let me assure them that uh, they will pay their for this. Because this is open state, we don't allow criminals to operate here. Open state will not become so we will not allow them to operate. Meanwhile, two more kidnappers of the Turkish school girls have been arrested and three million naira found on them. The recovery and arrest was made by the intelligence response team led by Assistant Commissioner of Police, Abakiari. The arrest was made Tuesday by the IRT at Majidun area of Lagos when the suspects stepped out of the creek to proceed to Ondo State and three million naira cash said to be their share of the ransom was found on them. The suspects are Ayomi 24, a native of Arubo town, a show the local government area of Ondo State, and Super Alex, aged 21, and a native of Okuba town, a show the local government area also of Ondo State. They confessed to the kidnapping of the Turkish school girls and many other kidnappings within Lagos and Ogun State. Police say serious efforts to arrest other remaining members is on. Now to a rather sad one, the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, has confirmed the death of the River State Police Commissioner, Francis Odesoya. Odesoya died in an Indian hospital after a brief illness. <laughs>
area commanders, DPOs, and head of tactical units to redouble efforts in crime fighting and embark on a massive raid of suspected criminal hideouts and black spots. And just before we end this week's edition, remember security is everyone's business. Let's keep our society safe by giving useful information to security operatives. Send your comments to crimewatch at tvcnews.tv. I'm Ivy Cannon.